Hi YouTube, it's Aid here from Dirt Signal Second Hand Tyres. Welcome to part 16 of the boat restoration. Nothing like have a coffee break after you've done your domestic chores. I've just sanded out the inside of the keel, cleaned up where those braces were, and I'm going to put a coat of epoxy through there now, ready for putting in the woven mat which I've got to get now, it's the weekend, probably Monday to uh, put in. I've decided I'll go and see if I can buy a metre of metre or so of um, woven mat from the Chandlers rather than do it out of strips because it's, it's about 45 centimetres down along and up at the back end here so that's quite a bit of um, just ordinary tape so I'll see if I can get a meter of cloth and run it in that way rather than do it all in tape because I decided to go up the sides as well as along the bottom. I bought some oak trim to put on the edges of the seat and the thwart and uh, I've just mixed up some thickened epoxy it was a bit runnier than the peanut butter so that it sort of would uh, would squeeze out nicely if there was too much on, and just taped it onto the uh, taped it all together so that uh, it can go off. Apparently, unlike when you glue with wood glue, you need a little bit of pressure, but not too much clamping pressure because you'll squeeze out all of it and it won't uh, bond properly. So that's all I've done is just use some masking tape and just pulled it over. It helps to keep it all in line and keep it all tight against each other without squeezing out too much. There was hardly any squeeze out at all. So I'm going to take all this off and uh, eventually it will all get sanded and blended in together. And it might add a little bit of lightness at each end, each side of the seats and that, but uh, the little contrast will look quite good I think. Good news, everyone. Well, finally, I've managed to get hold of a piece of oak. And you'd think it had come from the other side of the world to, for the struggle that I've had. But I suppose it has in some ways because it's North American white oak, which I wanted in the first place. And uh, I got it from a place called East Kent Timber in Canterbury, just on the outskirts of Canterbury. And they were very helpful and uh, pulled down a whole rack of planks just like this and I was able to sort through and find the, the one that I liked best. Now, if you know anything about the way wood is cut, this is a, a plank from a trunk and it's been sliced through and through horizontal with the ground. So this has come out of a tree somewhere, uh, either this way up or the opposite way up from somewhere in the lower third or the upper third of the tree. And so it's not quarter sawn, it's slab sawn. But we looked through a load of planks like this and they're all the same. So I imagine that they take out the slices through the middle between three and nine o'clock, as it were, uh, which are quarter sawn apart, um, apart from obviously the heartwood, and just put them to one side in America maybe, I don't know. So I've had to compromise a bit, but there is vertical grain in this, or near vertical down one side, this side here, and all the way through. In fact, it's, it's better down the bottom end. But seeing as how the longest piece I want is for the keel, and it tapers down from 90 mil at that end to about uh, 20, maybe even less at this end, I should be able to get a nice near quarter sawn vertical grained piece of wood the keel and I can fudge around with the bilge 
runners as well. Uh, this plank, there's plenty of wood there for other things as well. I need some ribbing probably for running from the rails to the king plank to support the foredeck. So uh, I'm pleased with this. And it was actually, this whole plank cost less than probably it would have cost well, it's much less than it would have cost me if I'd have got it from over a deal already planed. This is just sawn, but I can do the planing easy enough because I don't want to take too much off anyway. And I'm not paying someone to take my wood away, as it were. I'm just taking off as, as much as I need to, just move it up. So I'm a happy bunny again. It's taken ages, I don't know why apart from no one's willing to commit themselves. But then again, it's not a normal run me the mill sort of job, is it? What I'm doing in some ways, there's plenty of people to do it, but it's not a common job. And um, I'm used to that in some ways. I've had, uh, I've done a lot of things over the years that, that aren't common. And so you have to sort of rely on your own knowledge and self-belief which is something I didn't do when I originally bought the wood from, uh, or went to buy the wood from Deal. So uh, that's probably the most important thing is self-belief in, in some ways. I'm not going to get all philosophical, but certainly the, uh, the people that I watch on YouTube, uh, whether it's the wood, woodcrafting, woodworking, boat building, or any other thing in, that, that, uh, that I'm, I find interesting to watch, and there's plenty of that on YouTube, knife making etc the self-belief comes from experience and that is the only way you're going to ever learn anything experience you can watch it or read it in books but just by doing it yourself you can surprise yourself lecture over well I put the mat in yesterday and uh, left it overnight I was actually sitting here listening to the radio after I finished and the uh, epoxy started to sort of gas up as it was curing and it, uh, it got quite a bit of a pungent air um, in here so I had to leave it and go out back, up, back down into the house. The next thing to do now is to trim all that off, flush and do it with some scissors and then some sandpaper. The sandpaper wears through where the epoxy is up to and it all sort of comes away quite easily. Let's tidied up the inside of the keel. Ready now to turn the boat back over and start chopping up this nice big plank of oak. flush and tied it up and then another coat of epoxy ran in, painted in. When I first started stripping out the boat it had the pieces of wood across in those positions there, there's three of them, the other one's hidden down there. They were put in to strengthen the keel in that area I think. It was a boat that was used on the sea so it may be that it warranted putting them in. I'm in the mind now to not put any back but if I find there's a reason why they were there when I'm using the boat on the river then of course that's something I can put in later. Also all the way through 
in that kiln and it varied in thickness but it was in places really quite thick. They mixed up a batch of epoxy of some sort, it was dark blue or black virtually and that had been run in and just left in a pool all the way through to harden off by itself and seal up all the screws that were put through when they replaced the keel. And that's the reason why I've put the mat in there because obviously there's an awful lot of gunk to go in and far more than um, than I would ever imagine would be useful and certainly it didn't really provide any great strength because it was all cracked and it cracked away quite easily so uh, putting in an extra layer of mat the woven stuff that I put in has sort of helped to bring that all together and seal up the bottom of the keel so that all the screw holes that were there have been filled and sealed over and ready for me to turn the boat over now and start doing the woodwork. So now that second layer of epoxy has gone in over the mat, I think it might be time to draw a line under this episode and look forward to the next where the boats flip back over again and we get this lovely plank up on the bench and start marking up and cutting out, planing it up and getting it fitted to the underside. Obviously there's some more painting to do on the inside now as well. So I'm going to have to buy another pot of the uh, bilge paint to uh, fill in all that. But it won't do any harm because it, an extra coat on there will help sort of keep it all nice and neat. So I may even do that before I turn it over. I'm down to the nearly the last knockings of the uh, epoxy, the second litre. So it is lasting a long time and it's probably enough to epoxy the woodwork before it goes on. Once it's fitted I shall dry fit it first and then once I know it's all going to fit I shall then epoxy like I did with the, uh, the rails here. Epoxy the undersides and then put it all onto the boat. I've got some, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, it comes in a, a tube where you gun it in, and Sikaflex I think it is, and that will act as a seal between the wood and the uh, hull as well when that goes together, but obviously that's for a future vid. And uh, winter's sort of really starting to set in now, frost on the car last night when I went out to pop out for a bit so uh, obviously this is an ongoing thing it'll be next year now I bet because there's still the trailer to do and fit the tow bar to the car so if you're thinking about doing a restoration job don't ever set yourself a deadline I did see some uh, vid on YouTube of, um, I can't remember his name now, Lee something, bald-headed comedian and a group of people who do restoration stuff and they had a week, five days or something, five or seven days to do up a steam launch and get it to a show up in on the Norfolk Broads and they did it apparently but I can't see how they did it, not really. Stripping down a steam engine and putting it back together again testing a boiler and all that sort of stuff, even that would take a, a while I would imagine. So uh, a little rowing boat like this <laughs> should have been done in half an hour. Anyway, thanks for watching and I look forward to reading your comments and uh, I, uh, I think that will wrap it up for now. So I'll see you later. Cheerio.